So today's video is all about solar and I'm going to cover three things. Firstly, I'm going to talk about the different types of solar panels and why I chose the panel that I did. Secondly, I'm going to talk about charge controllers, why you need one and go over the different types of charge controller available. And finally, I'm going to show you how I installed a solar panel on my van. Hello, my name's Sam Payne. Welcome to Vagabond Vans and this series of videos on my Fiat Ducato camper conversion. Apologies if I sound a bit nasal today. I have got a bit of the old man flu, so I will do my best, but just bear with. So in this episode, I'm gonna talk about the process that I went through when buying and then installing a solar panel on the roof rack of my van. I'm going to talk a bit about the different types of solar panel that you can buy, what an MPPT controller is, um, and then I'll go through the process of how I installed the panel on my van, given the fact that I already have a roof rack installed. Now, it's worth saying I'm not going to talk about solar panel sizing and how to work out how many watts of solar power you need. There's already tons of videos out there that cover this. I would recommend checking out Greg Virgo's channel, but he's got a couple of good videos on this. Again, I'll put links up here for those. Now, before we get into it, it is worth me saying that if you plan on always staying in proper campsites uh, and paying for electrical hookup, then there's probably no point in you uh, getting a solar panel. Um, I opted for a solar panel because I plan to do a lot of wild or free camping and long weekends down at the beach where there's not always gonna be electric hookup available. And so hopefully having the solar panel uh, should give me the extra freedom that I otherwise wouldn't have. And will mean that if I am free camping, um, I won't have to start my engine to charge up my domestic battery. So I decided to buy a 200 watt solar panel. Um, this panel coupled with my 230 amp hour battery should mean that I can easily run my fridge all day, have some lights in the evening, and charge my phone overnight without having to worry about my battery going flat. The first thing that I discovered when buying my panel was that there are in fact two uh, different types of solar panels that are widely available for camper vans. Um, and these two types are polycrystalline and monocrystalline solar panels. The bottom line is that monocrystalline panels um, have a higher silicon purity, uh, which means that they are more efficient than polycrystalline panels. The drawback or downside of a monocrystalline panel is that it's more expensive due to the higher silicon purity. However, it's not quite as straightforward as that, um, and there are other factors to consider. For example, polycrystalline panels perform better in colder temperatures. So if you're based in the mountains, then this is definitely something to consider. Um, and the poly panels might be a better option for you. On the flip side, another factor to consider is that uh, the monocrystalline panels tend to have a longer lifespan um, uh, than their poly equivalents and uh, the mono panels often come with a 25 year warranty. It's definitely worth uh, reading around the topic and doing some of your own research. I'll put a link up here um, with uh, a website that I found really useful. Um, and an easy way to spot the difference between a mono and a poly panel is that the mono panels have a black uniform appearance, whereas the poly panels, so the panels with the lower silicon purity and the lower uh, efficiency, have a speckled blue appearance. So I opted to go with a mono crystalline panel due to the higher efficiency. The next decision that I had to make was whether to go for a rigid frame panel or a low profile flexible panel. If you're going down the whole stealth van route or perhaps you're concerned with 
wind noise or you've got a smaller van and they're trying to keep the overall height below 1.8 meters so that you can get in uh, restricted height car parks then a uh, a low profile semi flexible panel may be a good option for you there is a considerable difference um, in the thickness uh, of the two two different types of panels flexible panel has a thickness of just two two mil um, this is versus uh, one of the rigid frame panels that has a thickness of uh, 35 mil there's also a considerable difference in the price um, when I was comparing equivalent wattage monocrystalline panels the equivalent uh, low profile flexible panel is about twice the price of a rigid frame panel. Since I knew that I was already fitting a roof rack to the van I wasn't overly concerned with wind noise or height restrictions uh, that a, a fixed frame fan, a panel could potentially cause um, so I opted for the cheaper rigid frame panel also since I was uh, or I would be fitting the panel on top of the roof rack I thought the rigid frame panel would be easier to fit to that roof rack rather than a flexible panel that would need to be bonded um, in place so once you've decided on mono or poly and then rigid or flexible it's really just a matter of deciding what size you want and this obviously depends on your specific van and the individual uh, needs of your electrical system so I bought uh, my panel from a website called Photonic Universe um, as I previously mentioned I went, went for a 200 watt panel this had dimensions of uh, 158 by 81 centimeters um, and just for information the panel weighs 15 kilos um, I chose this panel as with those dimensions I would be able to mount it either across the van or lengthways um, I hadn't made my, my mind up so it just left me um, that option there the final buying decision that you will need to make is what charge controller to go for. Why do I need a charge controller, I hear you ask. Well, the vo voltage of, of the solar panel is not going to match that uh, that's required to charge your battery. So you, you really need a charge controller to do three things. Number one is to ensure that you don't overcharge your battery. Number two, or two, uh, to ensure that the battery doesn't discharge during the night when the voltage of the solar panel will be lower than that of the battery uh, so you can imagine that it discharges to equalize um, and three uh, to try to maximize the efficiency from your solar panel there are essentially two different types of charge controller available a PWM, which stands for Pulse Width Modulation Charge Controller, and an MPPT, that's Maximum Power Point Tracking Charge Controller. Now, before I go any further and explain the difference between these two types of charge controllers, we need to understand a couple of things. Firstly, some basic physics. We need to understand that power is equal to a voltage multiplied by current. So power P is equal to voltage V multiplied by current I, which gives us P is equal to VI. We'll use that equation later. Now, sec the second thing that we need to understand is that, and this is ignoring solar panel inefficiencies, we need to understand that on a nice sunny day, a solar panel will provide charge at a voltage higher than that required by the 12 volt battery. So for a 100 watt solar panel, uh, this voltage will typically be around 18 volts. Or for my 200 watt solar panel, the uh, voltage on a, on a nice sunny day when the panel is providing lots of charge, the voltage will be about 36 volts. Now the difference between PWM, pulse width, 
width modulation and MPPT, maximum power point tracking, is that PWM simply provides the charge at the required voltage without altering the current, whereas an MPPT provides the charge at the required voltage, converts the excess voltage into current so that the battery is charged quicker and more efficiently. Let's look at some numbers to prove that point. Okay, so let's have a look at those slides in a bit more detail. So we'll look at PWM first. <clears throat> now, in this example, we're going to use a 200 watt solar panel, which is what I've got on my van. Um, and as I already mentioned, it's on a nice, nice sunny day. It's going to be providing charge at 36 volts. Now, using that power is equal to voltage times current rearranged to give current is equal to power divi divided by voltage we can work out the current a 200 watt solar panel will be delivering knowing that it provides charge at 36 volts so 200 watts divided by 36 volts is 555 five, five amps so that solar panel is providing 36 volts volts at 5.55 amps to the PWM charge controller. Now, what that PWM, M, the pulse width modulation charge controller does is it drops the voltage from 36 volts to 13.7 volts. So the optimum charging voltage for a 12 volt battery is 13.7 volts uh, so it's dropped it down from that higher voltage that is too high for the battery and it's going to damage the battery if, if you didn't have the charge controller um, and then the current has remained the same it hasn't done anything to the current all it's doing is dropping the voltage down from 36 to 13.7 now if we look at the MPPT charge controller, something slightly different is happening. So same same setup, 200 watt solar panel, providing charge at 36 volts, um, or providing charge 36 volts of charge at 5.55 amps. Um, so that's that's the same as what we were just looking at for PWM. We've now got an MPPT charge controller in here. Um, and so that again it's going to drop the voltage down to something that is useful to the battery um so it's not going to damage the battery so it's dropping it from 36 to 13.7 um, but what it is doing is converting that excess voltage so it's it's effectively reduced the voltage by a ratio of 2.6 uh, from 36 to 13.7 what it's doing is converting that into current so that the battery can charge quicker. So it's up the current. So current is obviously the rate, rate of flow of electrons. Uh, so the greater that that is, the faster you're going to charge your battery. So it's up that from 5.5 amps to 14.43, which is obviously quite a significant increase. Um, and yeah, so what that's going to mean is that the battery is going to charge quicker. How much quicker, we're going to look at now. So now, just looking at some of those numbers in a bit more detail, we've got the same MPPT chart that we were looking at just a second ago. The only bit of information I've added is that it is a 100 amp hour battery. So I've just added the capacity of the battery there, which is important for working out our charge times in a minute. Um, so really what I'm doing now is just quantifying where I got some of those figures from. Um, so as, as we now know, the MP MPPT controller uh, drops the voltage down from 13, 36 volts to 13.7 and it ups the current from, and I said it, Increase from 5.5 amps up to 14.43 amps, 
where did I get this 14.43 from? Well, what I did was I worked out the ratio that uh, the charge controller had dropped the voltage by. So we did that by the 36 that's coming in from the solar panel, divided it by the 13.7 that the battery wants. So that's the optimum charging voltage. That gave me the 2.63. So I know that it's decreased the voltage <coughs> uh, ratio of 2.63 to 1. Um, so that's the ratio by which it's going to increase the current by. Um, to maintain a constant power of 200 watts. So I just took the 5.5 amps, um, which is the current that it, the solar panel is providing the charge to the charge controller to, at, multiplied that by the 2.63, which gave me the 14.43 that I'm showing up here. Now, if I've got a 100 amp hour battery, uh, which is being charged at 14.43 amps uh, all we need to do is divide the capacity so the 100 divided by 14.43 and that will give us uh, a charge time so 6.93 hours so that's our charge time for for our system without an MPPT controller what about if we use the PWM well you remember that the current stayed the same so the current remained at 5.5 amps so we just take the capacity of the battery divide by 5.5 amps which gives us 18.1 hours now you can see a significant increase in charge time there between the two types of charge controllers um, so where i'm getting to with all of this is you really want to buy an mppt charge controller for your solar system. That's what I ended up buying. Um, this, all these calculations are massively simplified and ignore all kinds of efficiencies. I'm sure I'll get all sorts of comments saying, oh, what about, blah, 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 you know, all of this. But that is the, the long and short of it. The MPPT controllers are a lot more efficient. I've tried to uh, demonstrate that in the most simplified, way that i can um so i hope, hope you'll find that that useful so i yeah i ended up buying my solar panel and my mppt controller as part of a kit i bought it from a website called photonicuniverse.com um really good service i rang them out had a chat um just explain what I was doing with the van, what I wanted. I, I had a pretty good idea what I wanted, and um, the guy on the phone just sort of confirmed that everything would would work with my my setup that I was planning. Um, so that cost four hundred fourteen pounds and ninety nine pence. Um, yeah, no, it's good service. The only thing I'd say is that the panel arrived separately to the um charge controller and the rest of the bits so i think the company actually dispatched the panel and then the rest of it was fulfilled by amazon um, so just something to be aware of it doesn't all turn up in one package so we've had a look at the different types of solar panel that you can buy um, i've explained which one i chose for my van then had a look at the two types of charge controllers you can get the solar panels What's the difference between them and then what I bought? Um, now we're going to have a quick look at uh, how I installed the solar panel on the roof of my van. Um, this video doesn't include wiring up the solar panel, that'll be in a separate video. The first thing that I did when installing the panel was to screw the white plastic mount to the solar panel frame. There were eight mounts supplied in total, one for each corner and one for each side of the panel. I use stainless steel self-tapping screws to attach the mounts to the solar panel frame. Because I already had a roof rack mounted on the van, I'm mounting the solar panel to strips of aluminium that will sit across the roof rack struts. This will ensure that the solar panel is nice and secure. Here I'm using a circular saw to cut the 
three millimeter thick aluminium sheet uh, that I'm using to make the strips. I had to get a different blade from the circular saw, the one that I normally use for cutting wood. Um, I needed a blade with a higher tooth count to cut metal. I then attempted to attach these strips of aluminium to the plastic mount of the solar panel using a sealant adhesive. This didn't work very well and ended up making a bit of a mess. Uh, this didn't actually matter as we'll be putting through bolts through all of the components as you'll see in a minute. I then got the solar panel up on the roof. I drilled holes through the plastic mounts, the aluminium strips and the steel roof rack. I put bolts through all of these. Um, it's worth noting that I was using stainless steel uh, nuts, bolts and washers as these won't corrode. The nuts that I was using were nylon locking nuts so that they won't vibrate loose. Uh, I'm also using hammerite paint to seal the holes that I drilled in the steel roof rack. So this is my 200 watt solar panel. Um, now, normally you would attach this straight to the roof, but because I've got the roof rack, there's obviously no point in doing that. Um, so I just put on these aluminium struts um, which bolt on, it's just a through bolt, which you can probably see there, onto the roof rack, and then the solar panel mounts or brackets mount onto the aluminium struts, um, and then obviously the brackets are screwed directly to the solar panel, I need to add another screw in there. Um, so this frame is actually four separate pieces, they're not joined together. So you can see there that it's clearly a separate piece. And the idea of that is just so that these brackets have got a larger surface area to contact onto rather than just the roof rack struts, which are obviously quite narrow. <coughs> and yeah, that, that goes all the way around. <laughs> It's not connected up at the moment. But yeah, that solar panel is not going anywhere. So yeah, I mean, you can see if I didn't have the aluminium plates, it would just be screwed on there to the roof rack and then one halfway down in the middle and then one at the other end is now it's attached to the roof rack here here obviously further down so it's just a lot more secure in terms of placement of the solar panel i decided to put it to one side rather than at the front or you know in the middle and that's just left this whole right hand side of the van for storage whether it's surfboards or toys or whatever or useful stuff and that's it for this video uh thanks for watching well done if you uh made it all the way through i think that's the longest video that i've ever done that i've ever done so um yeah fair play uh hopefully there was some useful stuff in there for you uh if there was as always don't forget to like comment subscribe thanks for watching ciao